Leviticus 18 is a chapter that specifically spells out what God considers to be sexual sin. At the beginning of the chapter, God makes some things very clear. Number one, these are the words and commands of God himself. Number two, it's written to God's people. And three, these laws are to separate his people from all other cultures. It should be no surprise that our culture disagrees with these laws, but they are meant to be a dividing line between the people of Yahweh and all other cultures. Throughout the history of the church, these laws continue to be challenged. One argument is that it was written to the children of Israel, so it doesn't apply to us. But this chapter says that this is not just for the native child of Israel. And Peter said to the New Testament church, once you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. And another argument is that these laws are obsolete like the eating of certain meats. But in 1 Corinthians 6, Paul wrote that food was made for the stomach, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about our bodies. And the other argument is that Jesus died and paid for our sins, so it no longer matters. When this idea was brought to Paul in Romans 6, he replied, God forbid, since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? And do not give in to sinful desires. Now, even in Revelation, God addressed sexual immorality in his letters to the churches. So as disciples, we strive to live out God's definition of holiness, and we don't expect the world to understand or agree. Paul even said that we aren't to judge the world by this standard, but we are to address sin within the church body. And in 1 Corinthians 6, he reminds us to never underestimate the transforming power of the gospel message that saves. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God.